Mac and cheese is a simple, classic comfort food that is always pleasing to eat no matter the situation. Heck, even in a nuclear apocalypse, people still find themselves chowing down on these cheesy classics. I'm going to make the Blamco Mac and Cheese from the Fallout games in two ways. The pre-war classic Blamco Mac and Cheese with the help of the Fallout cookbook, and also the post-war irradiated version by giving it a few twists. If you don't know, the Blamco Mac and Cheese is a consumable food item in the Fallout games. It made its debut in Fallout 3 where you can find it lying around in the wasteland in its bright lemon lime green box. In Fallout 4, its packaging got rebranded into a blue box showing a bowl of mac and cheese with a bomb inside of it. In the game, you can actually make the Blamco Mac and Cheese as long as you have a food processor and the necessary ingredients. First, you need razor grain, which is a tough, sharp grass that wastelanders use as a replacement for wheat, which has become extinct. According to the cookbook, razor grain can be mashed up and reshaped into lumpy curved pieces of dough that work well enough as pasta. The in-game recipe also asks for purified water, which I assume is for boiling the razor grain macaroni, and also carrots and plastic, which I assume is a weird wastelander way of making cheese sauce. Yikes. Lucky for us, Blamco was gracious enough to partner up with this cookbook and generously provided their recipe so we can actually make their authentic pre-war version of mac and cheese. No razor grain pasta or carrot plastic needed. We start off by boiling two chopped up medium carrots. I don't think I've ever had mac and cheese with carrots as a part of the sauce before, but I appreciate the attention to detail here by the cookbook since carrots are part of the actual in-game recipe. We'll let those carrots simmer in medium heat for five minutes. Then we drain the carrots and transfer them to a blender where we'll add one and a half cups of whole milk, half a cup of heavy cream, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Blend all of those together until smooth. In a separate bowl, mix together a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of ground mustard, two teaspoons of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Then melt five tablespoons of unsalted butter in a saucepan over medium-high heat. Once the butter is melted, add the flour mixture while consistently whisking. When the butter and flour combine into a roux, Whisk in the carrot and milk mixture until everything is completely mixed well. Then we add 8 ounces of shredded sharp cheddar cheese and 4 ounces of shredded fontina cheese. Make sure to add the cheese in small batches. Salt and pepper to taste and then add in about a pound of cooked elbow macaroni and stir it in that cheese sauce until it's fully coated. And that's the classic Blamco mac and cheese. Now we have the pre-war cleaved non-irradiated variant, but in the recent Fallout games there's also the post-war dirty irradiated variant of the Blanco Mac and Cheese, so let's try to make that. I mean, to be honest, I could just add some green food coloring, but where's the fun in that? Let's try something a bit more ambitious. This time though, I'm not going to be using carrots. We'll be using around 4 cups of fresh spinach and half a cup of fresh parsley. I usually use flat leaf parsley, but the store only carried the curly ones this time. Now I know this is not very lore friendly because, let's face it, you're not going to be able to source spinach and parsley in a nuclear wasteland, but that can be our secret. Just pretend it's green fungus or something. Add half a cup of whole milk and half a cup of heavy cream and combine it all until it's evenly mixed. Then similar to the previous one, we're going to mix together a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of ground mustard, two teaspoons of garlic powder, but this time I'm not going to put the cayenne pepper since I don't want the heat to overpower the other flavors. Melt 5 tablespoons of unsalted butter in a saucepan over medium high heat. Once the butter is melted, add the flour mixture while constantly whisking. When the butter and flour combine into a roux, whisk in the spinach and milk mixture until everything is completely mixed well. Now to add the cheeses. This time I'm using 8 ounces of smoked cheddar instead. Because this box looks like it's been blown to smithereens, so I can see it having a smoky flavor. And instead of Fontina, I'm using 4 ounces of Gouda for a slightly more pronounced taste. Also, I imagine this dirty version to taste somewhat funky, so I'm going to add a bit of funk with 2 ounces of blue cheese. Mix everything well and add salt and pepper to taste. Then mix in about a pound of cooked macaroni. We're also going to add juice from half a lime to give it that nuclear acidity. Top it with even more blue cheese funk and we have a totally rad post-war Blamco mac and cheese. Alright, let's give them a taste. First, with the classic mac, 
Taste wise, it's a pretty solid mac and cheese. It's got a very neutral, inoffensive taste, which to me is great because it can easily go well with other stuff such as bacon, ribs, broccoli, or whatever you like to eat mac and cheese with. The cayenne also gives it a bit of a kick, which is nice. I do observe though that the texture is a bit grainy. I think it's because I cooked the roux on medium high. I think it overcooked the mixture in the cheeses and caused it to be not as saucy. Everyone's stovetops are different. I think if I used medium heat rather than the medium high the cookbook suggested, then it might have been more creamy. But still, the flavor was pretty good. Now for the irradiated version. First, let me whip out my dosimeter to see how radiated this is. Okay, it clocks at 3.5. 6 Ronkin. Eh, not great, not terrible. Let's dig in. I love the bright green color of the dish. The color from the spinach and the blue cheese topping truly gives it a nuclear look, which is really cool. Taste wise, it's way different from the classic style. Even though this is the dirty version, ironically, it tastes a lot fresher because of the spinach and parsley. The smokiness from the smoked cheddar really comes through and the lime juice gives it a good zing. The blue cheese isn't too overpowering, in fact I could probably add more. The flavors surprisingly all go really well together and if you want a mac and cheese with a more powerful taste, then I think you'd like this one. What did you think of these Blamco mac and cheese? If you like this video and want to see more behind the scenes content, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching, happy gaming, happy eating.